here we have T2, okay? You can see the little lift going up and down the side. That's called an alimac. Obviously, we have to get people up from here, up there, um, to, to be able to work. But to do that, we have to wear a full body harness. No, nobody here has... Ah, yes, we have. A full body harness looks like this. This is, our, this is my safety officer, you see, so he's always with his full body harness on. So as a full body harness is something that uh, if you think you, you're getting somewhere a bit dangerous, you can unclip it and you can clip it onto a yan lanyard. And then if you do slip, you slip, but only a certain distance, and then it holds you. Okay, so it's very important. So we're not allowed to go up there, okay? It's, it's, it's just too dangerous. And also you have to climb all sorts of places inside. So we have an alley mat which takes us to the top. Um, what we're, we're actually just about to concrete. When we get back, we may well see the concrete trucks being loaded onto a barge. And then we're going to be concreting 120 cubic meters of concrete today, which is the very first part of the deck. Up to now, we've just been doing the pylon. Now we start to come out left and right. It's the very first port of the deck. We have um, four pores to do where we are now, which is the bottom of the slab, then we're going to do the sides, then we're going to do the roof, and then we're going to do the cantilever bit sticking out. And then, as I said before in the, in, the, in the presentation, we can then start to... We can take this shutter here and we'll halve it in the middle. We'll halve it just where the crane is. We'll split it in two. So the, 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 the blue bit on this end will then start to come this way. And we'll do what we call incrementally launch. So we'll launch... And then the bit on the other side will go the other way. But we have to do it in a balanced way. Because if we go too far one way, the pylon will actually fall over. So we actually have to do it, we call it a balanced cantilever. And then once we get a certain distance away from the pylon, we'll then start to install the stay cables. The stay cables for this bridge, we just have one line in the middle. It's very slender. We have one line in the middle. And then we start to install those. Stay cables will start to install them in about um, end of May, June, I would guess, next year. That's when you'll first start to see the first stay cables. We have to wait till June because we have to build the pylon. We have to take the pylon here and we have to go up um, 14 pores. Each pore is 5 metres. So we have to take the pylon all the way up so we can actually attach the stay cables at the top. The stay cables are made up of, of, of lots of strands, individual strands, which we stress individually to a known force. Then it will then hold the, hold the road up. Okay, so we have stay cables going, we call back span, which is this side, and the main span, which is the main span that side. And the idea is we start launching from T1 and T2 about the same time, because we need to get to the middle about the same time, so we can do our joint. A stay cable bridge, when it's being constructed, is, is quite a delicate bridge until it's joined. Once it's joined, it becomes very strong. So the idea, we don't want to keep the bridge suspended in the middle. So we don't want to build this side first and then go and build the other side and then do the joint six months later. That's not on. A bad typhoon comes through and the bridge will actually rock. I was on one bridge where we had to stop work because all my workers got seasick because the bridge was swaying so much. That's during construction. Once you join it, after construction, it's very strong. That's why we need to try and get it constructed as quickly as possible. Okay, so once we're, we're the bridge here is at 50, in the middle, 52.5 meters above the, um, above the um, low water level. Once we come away from the pylon, we are, obviously we have to take the bridge back down to down to earth, down to ground level. So we start to come down here. So we've got here, this is what we call S3 behind me, and this is what we call S4. And these are two um, um, uh, piers which, on which the stay cable bridge will sit. Once we come over here, we then start taking a dive all the way down to the down to ground level. And then we go um, about one and a half kilometers that way, and we get our, our precast yard and our our um, uh, causeway. We can't go we can't go there today because our our our, our, our personnel trucks are quite small. And 
to get you there and then when we go to the precast yard unfortunately it is a it's a high area where we have to wear our our, our special shoes because it's deemed a working area so if i take you there i can't show you anything we're going to come back so we're not we're not going there okay but we showed you pictures of it and it, it's 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 a causeway going down down there and i think that maybe in in your in your handout you've got a, a, a video shoot of there anyway so Someone, someone asked when we, when we concrete all this up in the air here, we all we caught we concrete it in we call it in situ, in place. We don't lift the con we don't lift it up here already made. We actually make it up there. So we have to be, I say we have to be very careful to work safely so we don't drop anything. So we have various precautions, nets and everything to stop. And then um, in most bridges where I've worked where we've done this, um, the traffic goes underneath no problem so you'll be able to run you'll be able to run uh, the marine traffic can run as usual and we'll lift as usual it may be that um, if, there's, if there's two or three ships all coming at the same time there may be some discussion as to when we pour concrete but we do not stop we don't, we don't actually go and stop the work here if we'd been doing precast we'd have to stop the work because we'd have to bring big barges down and tugs and everything and position everything in the right place we're not doing that so that's the, the positive part from, from, from this where we're standing now is, is all um, made ground. As I say, Shell Island is, is here. We couldn't use Shell Island. Shell Island is owned by everybody, plus the Chinese. I'm sure the Chinese say that they've got something, <laughs> some, some, some hold over that. So we couldn't use Shell Island for any activities. So we had to build a, a new, um, um, we, we, and we, for some reason we call this Beachhead Charlie. And you might ask, why do we call it Beachhead Charlie? And the answer is, I haven't got the foggiest idea. <laughs> I have no idea why we call it Beachhead Charlie. But I, 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 I don't know. And the contractor is here, and maybe I'll ask him, but he probably won't know either. Anyway, this is called Beachhead Charlie, and this is where we have, um, we've made a big area, but it's still never big enough, because we always need more areas to store all our equipment. And we've got special special shuttering this is special shuttering that when we pour the concrete today all this shuttering can be lifted up to form the deck so we try and pre-make pre-make everything so that it's ready so that we, we we can lose as little time as possible when we're up there you can do it down here it takes half the time as doing it up there because you've got much more space more freedom down here you can see the cranes we have a lot of cranes here uh, the tower crane here is is going to, it can lift we're going to be lifting today um, five cubic meters of concrete. Does anyone know what five cubic concrete, five cubic meters of concrete weighs? Any idea? Any idea? Did someone say 11 tons? That was correct, well done. So it's about 11, 12 tons. So the crane can lift, can lift this in one go. He'll lift five cubes of concrete and then he'll take it up to the top and place it. This crane is designed, obviously, to go much, much higher. Because where we are now is, is approximately, depends on where you look, we're approximately 40, underside of it, approximately at level 45, plus 45 from the water. We have to go another 100 meters. So we've got another 100 meters up with the pylon. And the cross will come, well, the cross will start in another 70 meters. So it means that it's going to be way up there so it will be visible from absolutely everywhere obviously there's the only two places that go that high the rest of the places are all come underneath to support when we finished when we finished we have to take all this away make it all nice and neat and tidy again and um uh, and then uh, the we're very as you can see when we when we're coming by boat the channel is the channel here is 390 meters wide that's the that's the, that's the channel um, well, the actual channel is 260. The, 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 the span between our bridge is 390. We have to. We have to. When I was talking about design, we have to make um, um, calculations to what the ship collision might be if we if, if if we hit. So we have to be very careful that, that if a ship hits, it doesn't damage. This halfway ready. Halfway ready. No, we're not halfway. We're not halfway because it's 45 meters. So we're one third the distance. I mean the height. The height. So we've gone 45, we've got to go another 90. 
in rough terms. So it's, 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 you take that and you've got another one and another one on top. But the so, upper pylon will be thinner, right? Yeah, the, the, as, as I said, as we go up, it becomes slender. Mm. Because if we had a square pylon all the way up, it would look ugly. It's not, not designed nicely. So the idea is to have it... Also, if we had a square pylon all the way at the top, the wind, the wind would be a major problem up there, and the design would mean we'd have to probably put uh, 20, another 15 piles in here, because the wind factor, along with what we call the lever arm, I from up there down here, would be enormous. So you have to design it. Once again, it's octagonal shape. Another reason, octagonal shape, it buffers, it pushes the wind to one side. So as it hits it, it goes to one side, so the wind effect is less than if you had a square, a square um, um, pylon.